Hey guys, welcome back to some more Katoa Sojo. I actually haven't done too much in a while. I've been kind of got some allergy sickness stuff going on. Um, so yeah, but uh, this is my third recording today, I think. Uh, I had I just finished episode one of The Wolf Among Us, and now we're on to episode two, which I just started, which I did both of them today. So I finished. Yeah, I finished episode one of uh, Wolf Among Us and then started episode two today, but uh, I haven't played this in a while. I actually haven't played too much of anything in a while, so I think the path I want to go along right now is either Hanako's or Lily's, and then whichever path I don't do of theirs is the one I'm going to do next time, and then after Lily's and Hanako's are done, uh, I'll decide who's I want to do after that. Because I'm pretty sure Lily's and Hanako's paths are pretty similar. Maybe not. But I think they have kind of the same story stuff into them. And then, it's like, once you choose everybody else, there's tons of different story paths that you can go along and stuff, so... The sound of an alarm pulls me out of the fitful slumber and into the unpleasant state of wakefulness. I linger under the blanket for a few minutes, gathering energy to rise up while making excuses as for why I already haven't. Honestly, I wouldn't mind staying here for all day. School is surprisingly exhausting after a long pause, and the culture shock still has not faded, I think. Still, despite getting an impression that skipping class is easier, easy here, I don't think they are going to let me get away with that easily. And the nurse is bound to keep breathing down my neck with talk of exercising as well. So eventually, I do rise up and swallow the morning medications and put to my old soccer clothing. Thanks to my condition, I was exempted from taking part in gym class at Yamako, so I didn't get issued with a gym outfit. I'd order some some to cover excuse me I'd order some to cover such as content whoa contingency contingency something I don't know but wearing my old soccer clothes is kind of nostalgic I can't use them for that anymore so maybe they can get a new life this way a bit like me after all I'm going to start taking care of myself I can't afford to slack around I'll start from the basics Basics which include keeping the rest of my body in shape along with what little I can do strength to strengthen my heart. Maybe then I can go back to something approaching a normal life, or at least something where I'm less likely to fall over dead at any minute. I'm surprised to discover that I'm not the only one present at the track. Not just that, but it's a face I've seen before. A prosthetic leg girl who bowled me over in the hallway yesterday is running on the track literally like a half mechanical gazelle what was her name again? it was a short one but I can't remember she seems to be running laps at somewhat easy lope her prosthetic legs clanking rhythmic rhythmically on the hard track surface I wonder what reason she has for running this early in the morning maybe it's something akin to mine and the nurse is oppressing the poor girl to jog like he is oppressing me. I certainly wouldn't be here if it weren't for my health and his prompting to do so. And even with this being like and even with things being like they are, it's only because I wanted to get out of the get it out of the way early. The fact that I would less likely the fact would be I jeez. The fact that I would less likely to encounter someone who would witness my pitiful attempts to get into shape was merely a happy accident. I'd leave it, but it seems that my former assailant noticed me on her last lap. She waves at me cheerfully and jogs over. <clears throat> Good morning, your name's Sal, right? She grins, seemingly pleased that she remembered my name. You may not remember me. Am I knocked you over in the hallway yesterday? 
How could I forget such a <clears throat> blunt introduction? Emmy has the decency to look vaguely apologetic for a moment before giggling. Yeah, sorry about that again. Hmm. Well, so long as you don't make a habit of it, I suppose I'll be fine. Great. I'm not sure she realized I was joking. So the spy consultant the nurse was talking about, is that actually you? That's right. Oh. I was expecting someone from the nursing staff, to be honest. What are you saying? I don't look like I could be a spy. No, this is more like a relief. I was afraid I would have someone to watch my every move. Unless you're here to do exactly that. No, I'm here for my own reasons. The nurse just asked me if I had seen a messy haired transfer student who looks like he's kinda lost around the track. <laughs> so why are you down here? Emmy strikes a dramatic pose. Training! For what? Track! Oh, I see. You're on the track team, then. Emmy nods enthusiastically. Yep, I'm one of the better runners, too. And modest about it, too. Hey, you should join up. Uh, no thanks. It's good exercise, you know? I think that much activity is probably out of the question for me. Nah, I'm not even sure that I really like running all that much. Plus, I'm just not into organized sports, you know? It's true. I never even really got that much into soccer. I mean, I'd run around with my friends and all, but that was really the only reason I ever played. That's the only reason I'd ever play soccer, is just to run around, otherwise I don't know what the hell I'm doing. It wasn't for the glory to be found on the field, that's for sure. Emmy seemed to understand my meaning. I see, I see. Not in, not, not that into the whole organized thing. But now that you're here, I guess we can go run together, huh? What? Uh, sure, I guess. Emmy seems pleased. Are you can Are you going to warm up? Real men don't warm up. Uh, that's not true. Oh no, you always should warm up bad, Hisao. She scolds me enthusiastically, but then she smiles and leans closer. I hate warming up too. <laughs> she laughs suddenly. Heck, I don't even have to stretch my legs. Just to confirm her statement, she bounces up and down a couple of times, giving up passing impression of standing on a pair of springs. Her leg blades seem to be quite elastic. Let's go! So we both take off around the track, and I can immediately see that she wasn't lying about being good at running. Emmy moves fluidly, throwing herself into the run with sort of a wild abandon. I found myself concentrating more on running properly. Hands spread, right? And something about hitting the balls of your feet rather than the heels. I try to match my stride with Emmy's, but it's pretty difficult. Apparently I'm not very good at it. Maybe Emmy could help me with that sometime. I'm really not feeling up to more than a couple of us today. I slowly and slowed a, a walk pretty quickly. Emmy keeps running and doesn't seem to notice I've stopped until she passes me a second time. She quickly skids to a halt, breathing steadily in contrast to my own somewhat gasping demeanor. Finished already? I hang my head ruefully. Heh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not ver in very good shape right now. Emmy nods and grins at me again. She seems to do a lot of smiling. Well, the important thing is you started, right? Next time you just have to try and hold out longer, and then longer, and longer. It eventually will be- and eventually you'll be great. I'll keep that in mind. But I think right now I'm gonna get ready for class. Shouldn't you? Emmy shrugs unconcernedly. Now nah, I've got plenty of time. I notice that she's not wearing a watch. Are you sure? Another Kayla shrug. Not really, but I've got to finish my routine. See you later, Hisao. Er, uh, see ya. Ah, er, yeah, see ya. I'm not sure whether this morning's experiment was a success or a failure. But I'll admit that I do feel slightly good about getting out this there this morning. And like Emmy said, I just need to keep at it in order to get better, right? <clears throat> Practice makes perfect, or something like that. It's nice, at least, to feel like I've taken some some semblance of control over my own health. I'll have to try to keep this up.
I head back to the dorms to wash and change into my uniform, try to resist the urge to take a really long and hot shower. I'm getting tired from all the running, so I just want to unwind, but I don't want to take a I don't want to break my slowly building routine of getting to school before the morning rush. Oh, my mouse is in the way. Sorry about that. After a long shower anyway. After taking a long shower anyway, I dry myself off. I dry myself off and get out of the stall to put on my clothes. Oh no. Out of nowhere, a shadow appears with the mist looming and radiating skin. <laughs> Malicious intent in bursting through the fog. Kenji, what the hell are you doing? Oh my god. That. <laughs> what are you doing here? What the hell? You scared me. What's your problem? I should be asking you that. I've been looking for you all over the place, man. What do you mean, all over the place? I want to ask if he's been looking for me like that. Dark naked, but holding my tongue back. I finally realize I'm still naked too, and quickly hold up my shirt in front of me, but Kenji doesn't seem to notice a thing. His glasses are fogged up, but then why doesn't he wipe them off? Is his vision so bad it's like perpetually seeing through fog? You know your room, and yeah, that's it. Hey, I mean, I still had to get up though. Whatever, it's not important. Can I borrow some money? No, you can't. Oh my goodness. He puts on an innocent face that looks away, trying very hard to look very casual. It doesn't work. <laughs> He's as transparent as his window pane sized glasses. Well, at least I don't have to censor. It's already censored for me with a leaf. Where in the hell did they even get a leaf? Or where did he get a leaf? Kenji, you're weird. Talking neutrally like this, wearing nothing feels awkward. Actually, somehow it's even more <laughs> awkward to be naked in front of someone when they can't see me being naked to say nothing to the fact that he's naked as well. I try to brush the feeling off with little success. Money? Sure. No! Sal, what are you doing? Awesome! Wait, why do you need it? Eh... <laughs> Can't you just give it to me because I had... Can you just give it to me because I had the goodwill not to rush through your pockets while you were in the shower? I could have, but I exercised restraint. And in the end, isn't that the thought that counts? Come on, be a pal. This makes no sense. If it's the thought that counts, I should withhold payment since his thoughts were so clearly impure and his intentions are probably even more sinister since you can't tell me what they are. I say as much to him. I'm offended, man. But if that's our game, then fine. If that's your game, then fine. I guess I have no choice. I want to order pizza. And I already have the most of the cost of the pizza. I need... I need your help with the rest. I get some of the pizza too, right? No? Oh, you're ripping me off, man. Are you serious? Yeah, I would give you some. But you have class. You don't have time to eat pizza. What about you? I'm not going to class. I have to wait for the pizza and pay the guy and then eat it. It's not easy. You have to obtain the pizza stealthily. If you don't, everyone will see you in the pizza, and they will ask you for a slice. <laughs> it's a hard world out there. Everyone wants a piece. Then you're left pizzaless in an unforgiving world. It's happened before. That's how I know. Sure it did, Kenji. Every day I plan my vengeance. <laughs> so that when the people who wronged me order a pizza, I will be there. Ever vigilant. Oh my god. Kenji strikes a dramatic pose completely without irony. But yeah, I only need like 400 yen. Please, you're my only hope. I can't go outside and buy my own pizza. It's too far. Well, you can't go outside either because you're naked. And that's pretty sure that's disturbing the peace. Yeah, pretty sure that's disturbing the peace. Unless you want the cops to frisk you like that, then go ahead. I try not to go out unless it's obviously necessary. Let me tell you what happened the last time I went out, carefully planning it out in advance. I was outside. I can't remember what I was doing. Something? Standing, maybe? I was wondering how I got there. Oh, jeez. And then out of nowhere, it happened. Like a flash of lightning splitting the sky. Like how you split a sandwich into two equal pieces. Oh. Dang it, I didn't get to read it. It was the second most shocking moment of my life. What was the first? He ignores me and keeps going until I grab him and shake him. 
Because he's just trying to keep the momentum. I'll go with that. Even if it's more likely he just didn't hear me. It was like the opening some kind of anime show. You know how... You know how there is always oh, a part where the main dude's fighting his rival? They fight each other and clash swords. And there's like big dramatic colored auras and zoom. It was like that, but with poo. <laughs> like, okay. So yeah, I need the money, please. Don't leave me hanging. I only need like 10,000 or 1,000 yen. You just said 400. I thought it was 400. Okay. What? I'll pay you back, I swear. You better. That's what it means to borrow stuff. Isn't 400 yen like $4? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know that currency. I don't know when, but I'll be able to pay you back. You have one week. Ah! Kenji winches and makes a noise like a. Ah, I didn't get to read it. You're not supposed to be so tight assed about money between brothers in arms, man. Men have it bad as it is. Did you know that male porn stars only make about half what female porn stars make? Uh, that's the only currency I'm pretty sure females would make more than men. I'm not trying to be offensive, but it's probably the hard truth. Actually, that is the hard truth, because people are dunces and they don't pay women like they should be paid. It doesn't mean anything unless you're a porn star. So maybe I'm a porn star on the side, struggling to make ends meet as I fight the feminist agenda. And you can't even spot me... You can't even spot me your crumbs, you bastard. Nobody understands. Nobody! Wouldn't feminists be against pornography in the first place? The feminist agenda... Feminist agenda stuff again. This stuff is important. I can see that you don't give a shit. But this is serious. Here. Feminists are a dangerous enemy. Are a dangerous enemy. Make no mistake. You take them lightly and you'll wake up the morning with a knife in your back. Bam! Out of nowhere. How do you wake up in the morning if someone stabbed you in your sleep? Women are terrible at stabbing things. I thought you just said don't take them lightly. Well, I mean, don't take them lightly from big things. Individually, they're not a threat. But if there is some kind of war, like a big war with men on one side and the feminist forces on the other side, it would be pretty ugly. And that day will come when the feminists come out of their central top secret worldwide feminist headquarters and say, It's on now, mother... <laughs> oh my god. You're being ridiculous. There's no big worldwide feminist headquarters building. Where would they even hide that? I mean, it would have to be a mess. It would have to be massive. You couldn't hide that on Earth. Someone would notice a big fortress with women only in it. He said it was on Earth. Oh my god, Kenji. I turn away from Kenji and start practicing frowning faces in the mirror so that I can figure out what kind of frown will best express my emotions. He can't see me from the distance anyway. Which unfortunately means that he just keeps on ranting without any regard to sensibility. Yeah, there is a war going on. A war not many know about. But it's a great one that will one day boil over and encom encompass all of the known world. Then we will go back to pick side. Then we will... Huh. Then we will have to pick side. We will have to make a... St to take a... St uh, we will have to make a stand. In fact, it's happening right now. Imagine it. The bloody battlefield. A vicious conflict without end. I almost gave up when I thought this case was silly. When I grew tired of the bleakness of our fight. When I mistook the time, the power went Whoa. When I mistook that time, the power went from our feminist raid. I thought the war the huh, I thought the end was near. But I re but I realized that if I gave up, it would be all over. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> and I knew I had to get serious. Because I am the last sane man in the insane world. It's about duty. Must be a pretty crappy movement if all Hinges on one naked guy ranting in the bathroom to another naked guy. So can I have some money? <laughs> oh. He's blocking the way out. It's getting cold because I'm still naked. I want to go to class, so I agree to spot him the money. Awesome, thanks, dude. We should go bowling later on. Bowling? Yeah, it's the ultimate sport. There are almost no women bowler either. Bowlers either. Making it also the manliest sport. Oh, goodness. Should I wear my pink bowling shirt with matching shoes or the pastel green with flower accents? That sounds pretty feminine. There are bowling clothes. Maybe. 
Anyway, you had better pay me back. I can pay you back and stuff, right? <laughs> I don't have time to ask him to elaborate on what that means. I don't know, I have to get to class. You're kinda in the way. Oh, sorry, yeah, I don't wanna hold you up. I have some stuff to do myself. This time has come. Time for what? I just like saying that. Okay. Okay, now the time has really come. For what? You just like saying it. Oh. I have to use the bathroom. Get out of it! <laughs> I was just going to. And what does that mean? It's a big bathroom. So? I have to be alone or I can't go. The pressure! Oh my goodness. Okay, what if someone else comes in? <laughs> I'll think of something. I give him my practice frown and looks kind of silly reflecting his glasses. He either doesn't notice or doesn't see anyway, so I get dressed and run back to my room, feeling as though an eternity passed since I woke up. You know that? I felt longer than what it actually was. It was only like 20 minutes long. Dang you, Kenji. Actually, maybe it's only 15 minutes long. Oh, it was like 20, 15 minutes long. That is the time I will never get back. I'll get him for this somehow. But right now I have to get to class. I'm the first person in the class today, although I think I'm a little too early. Then again, sitting alone here for 20 minutes sure beats having to suffer that time with Kenji. The combination of fatigue, frustration, and boredom starts making me feel very tired. I black out for a second, waking up when my hand hits the surface of the desk. Rubbing my forehead, I realize this is a good reason as to any to stay up for now and stop coming to class so early. Eventually I hear a tapping noise outside the hallway and Lily's tall figure appears in the doorway. She's not in this class so she must have some other business. Maybe she's looking for Hanako. Lily stops at the door looking hesitant if she, as if she was a vampire who can't come in unless invited. I consider doing so. She looks rather lonesome standing there. She steps in on her own according though. After straightening her skirt and shirt collar as if it was of importance to look prim when entering our classroom. Excuse me. She goes into the quiet classroom with a probing, delicate voice. I realize the science might unnerve her because of her blindness, so I break it. Good morning, Lily. Miss Al? Good morning. I didn't hear you come in. I wonder if she was thinking it's suspicious. I didn't say anything to her before. It's likely if I were to tell too big a lie now, it would sink me. Well, I was already here, just asleep until now. Oh, have you seen Hanako today in, by any chance? No, she seems to come in only just before the bells ring, or after that. Do you want me to tell her something for you? No, it's fine. It's strange, but I think we're the only two people in school right now. I don't hear anyone else in, on my way here. I shouldn't have gotten up so early today, I guess. You're chasting yourself by doing something that other people should punctually rather whoa. You're chasting yourself for s doing something that other people should? Punctuality is a good thing. I think so anyway. It's very it's a very busy morning today. The festival is coming up soon. Today is the deadline for event registration, budget reports, and any other official paperwork. It could be that everyone is trying to complete the necessary forms at the last minute. Maybe that is why it's so quiet today. Holy hell. Hi! Oh no, not Misha. Misha pops into the room with Shizun as if on cue, shouting with a loudness that makes Lily visibly flinch. Hi, Tian. Hi. Da da da. Look, it's the class representative. Hello. Lily smiles, probably amused by Misha's or Shizun's use of the word look. Good morning. Dot dot dot. Of course you're not the representative of this class, right? Right? I'm not. Lily seems a little more guarded in her answer to Shizun than she was with me the other day. I guess they really don't get along at all. Then I realize that Lily might actually not know Shizun is present. She's trying to de detect whether or not she is to know who she is talking to. For all she knows, she's talking to Misha, but knowing that she and Shizun are practically inseparable, she might expect Shizun being the one that actually talks. Damn, how complicated. I decide to help Lily out for my own peace of mind more than anything else. You're here early, Shizun. 
Tut tut tut. You were here. You were here even earlier than us. Misha puffs out her cheeks angrily. Why is she getting angry? Does she feel emotions on Shizun's behalf too? It's not that weird though that Shizun didn't make, didn't like my little comment. It's true. I was here earlier than them, so me saying something like that could definitely be misinterpreted as anything. Especially to Shizun, who doesn't have the benefit of hearing tone to gog intent. <clears throat> Before I can start weighing whether or not I should apologize, Shizun has already moved on. Dot dot dot. Class rep, it's a good thing you're here. We have to talk. Dot dot dot. The festival is coming up in three days, right? Every other class has already handed in their project budget reports for the year, their events. Even the first years, except you. Wahaha! <laughs> There's still time to hand it in, isn't there? Dot dot dot. Today! The deadline is today! You're certainly taking your time, aren't you? If I had it my way, I'd have all of the necessary paperwork days ago. But someone had to say the deadline. Please extend it! Yes. Yes, that was me. Planning something on this scale is not a small task. And a week is too small a time frame to expect a whole class to work out such a complex issue completely. Dot dot dot. Do you want to know what's harder than distributing the funds for one class event? Handling the same matter for every class in the school and then some. There are those who... The one who does that is me. Misha puts her hands on her hips, stands up straight. Wow, she is really getting into the role. Lily doesn't look like she is very amused, though. Hey, Shizun, aren't you being a little too hard on her? There's still a whole day left. Please, this out. It's all right. Lily seems happy I'm taking her side, but a bit conflicted that I might not think she can take care of herself. If this is about the budget, then I'm disappointed. You think I had forgotten about it? <clears throat> if this is about the budget, then I'm disappointed. You think I've forgotten about it. I understand how important it is. Da -da -da. Then, can I have it, please? So soon, she might not have it on her at this exact second. It's not here right now. I asked two students to take care of it for me. Students from my class. She emphasizes the last sentence, much to my surprise. She knows about Shizun and Mifa's, Misha's efforts to rope me into the student council. I guess word must have gotten around, so now she's using me as ammo against Shizun. This is this gets better and better. Da -da -da. It was your responsibility. A budget report isn't something you should just be delegating anyway. As class rep, it's your job to be on top of things. This kind of disregard for proper procedure is really just terrible. They completed it, being capable of doing so, but the students have been sick recently, so they could not come to school and give it back to me. If you want, I will apologize on their behalf for getting sick. <laughs> okay. Although Misha misses... Lily's little jab entirely, Shizun doesn't, and she seems torn between being offended by Lily's daring and jumping for joy at the prospect of a challenge. Oh, excuse me, I'm yawning. <clears throat> da -da -da. Lily, don't they live here at the school? That's a five-minute walk, you know. What could they possibly have that prevents them from taking five minutes out of their busy lives to drop off something that could affect the enjoyment of the entire class? Lily opens her mouth to say something, but Shizun closes the gap between them and starts signing furiously, waving her hands around like an orchestra conductor. Misha tries her best to convey the same passion, but I but can't seem to lose her normal cheerful tone. This results the result is interesting and somewhat surreal. Da -da -da. And what's with that attitude? I said that it's not something you should be delegated anyway. Are you the class representative or are you not? Tell me the names of those two students. They should have your job if you can't even handle something this simple yourself. One form isn't full. One form isn't the full extent of what I'm supposed to take care of. Lily's tone is growing slightly impatient. She is doing a good job of not letting Shazun see how unsettled she's becoming. She's playing her cards close to her chest. 
Suzune, on the other hand, wraps her fingers cheerfully along the edges of her glasses, knowing Lily can neither hear nor see how excited she is. Da da da. Of course you do. Of course, you do so much, class rep. It must be difficult being you. Lily tightens her lips as Misha's words clearly understanding. Lily tightens her lips at Misha's words, clearly understanding the intent behind them, even though Misha delivers them without even a hint of sarcasm, which they were meant to have. Shizun and Lily don't like each other. That much is clear, but this seems a little much. It seems like Lily has had enough and is ready to push back. Oh, jeez. I was actually just discussing the budget report before you came by. You must be very talented. I've finished all your student council duties so quickly that you can track me down and make sure I don't forget my own. You're actually accusing me of slacking off. It seems like you're confusing me with yourself. I don't think so. That would be a very difficult thing for me to do, comparing myself to you. You're right. The difference between us is like heaven and hell. Oh, and it's not hard to guess which one you might represent. Oh my goodness. The air between them ripples with the heat of their en enmity. Well, not really. They can't disguise it anymore, though even Misha looks like she's beginning to understand the real nature of this conversation. That was really weird and interesting. Da da da. Hey Chan, don't you slack off either. What are you talking about? Da da da. Aren't you taking part in the festival, Hachan? You are, aren't you? Then I hope you're gonna be I hope you're going to do a lot more than take to make sure it goes smoothly than this person. Ouch. I don't understand why Shazun is suddenly getting mad at me. Come on, cut me and then lay some slack. Hey, I'm the new guy, remember? It's not like I could have done much, even if I wanted to. That's right. You shouldn't expect a transfer student to jump right into this on his first week. Lily's taking my side. Lily taking my side feels oddly comforting, so I decided to back her up too. Yeah, you're being unreasonable to, with us both. Dot, dot, dot. Excuses, excuses. Miss Class Rep has had plenty of time to deal with her report. And we repeatedly offer you a position to help with the student council work, but you refuse to commit yourself to making the festival a success. Yeah, but as I said back then, I'm not sure if... I don't have time for this right now. No matter what I do, it will mean being drawn into a confrontation with Shizun, and that is what she wants. Whatever, forget it. I turn my back at them. Lily... Class is going to be starting soon, so we can talk more later. I'll tell Hanako you were looking for her. I can feel Shizun freezing. Maybe this is the first time she has ever been ignored in such a blunt manner. <laughs> Thank you, Hassal. I'll leave now, then. She gives me the sweetest smile I've seen all week and turns her heels to make her exit. As soon as Lily walks out the door, I suddenly start feeling reluctant about turning to face Shizun. I can feel her eyes burning into my back. I can't bring myself to look at her. She must be furious. I keep expecting Misha to say something to alleviate the tension. But it really is wanting too much. In the end, I go back to my seat and listen to the sound of Shizun's footsteps as she marches out of the room. She doesn't return until a few minutes before class. Hanako doesn't come to the morning class at all, leaving her seat looking empty and lonely in the back of the classroom. I have to tell her that Lily was looking for her if I see her later. <clears throat> After the event of this morning, class is pretty boring in comparison. I turn, to the, I turn the pages of my textbook lazily. I have a bit of catching up to do, despite trying to keep up my studies at the hospital, but I'm not feeling that enthusiastic about it. <clears throat> the clock at the front of the room sounds unbearably loud. The 
teacher hasn't said anything in over seven minutes. Instead of opting to cover the board in rows, in rows of equations taken directly from the book, the rhythmic clashing of chalk on the blackboard seems to synchronize perfectly with the ticking of the clock. I start to copy down the equations just to pass the time, even though they are, even though they are right there in the textbook. And the bell rings. I'm not in a hurry because I have nothing to do. So I stay for a while reviewing what we could cover in class today. I prefer to leave class anyway so I don't have to deal with crowding in the hallway. And notice... <clears throat> One sec, my throat's kind of bothering me. <clears throat> <clears throat> Alright. I notice Shizu and Misha also have also stayed back behind, talking to someone from another class. She's doing signing so fast that her hands make noise like swords cutting through the air. Maybe there is pent up anger in there. Misha's trying desperately to keep up, but it's clear she can barely manage to even understand her. Put my head down, whatever they're discussing it looks like serious business. Shizun signs to the <laughs> Shizun signs to the point where her wrists crackle and Misha struggles to spit it out in word form. Sometimes she trips over herself like she's dealing with tongue twisters. And then on top of that she has to sign back anything the other girl says. Seems like a rough job. Misha looks tired, like she is about to faint. Luckily for her, their business is soon finished, and the girls sit down on their seats again. Oh, I'm so tired. She's hanging her head limply on her desk, looking exhausted. They use the opportunity to reconcile, which is doing a bit, without getting roped into the student council. Now I suspect that door is now closed for me. Festivals, <laughs> festival preparations must be tough for you. Indeed, the people in this school seem to be taking festival very seriously. Whenever I see people idling around before and after classes, they're always talking about their plans for it. It's kind of neat to see everyone being so enthusiastic about it. I'm probably the only one who doesn't have something to do. Shizun scoffs me at first, as if she's trying to decide whether to ignore or sneer at me. But in the end, she starts signing without doing either. Misha perks up, looking at her hands with slightly unfocused eyes. She signs with harsh, heavy, dramatic strokes. Misha translates her signing into speech for me. She does it so well, it's almost like Shizun is actually speaking transmitting her thoughts directly through Misha. She must have practiced it vigorously. Well, of course we're in the student council, as you know, so we're pretty busy. That's not. It's an important duty of ours to ensure the success of the festival with all our strength. With that. We should shame ourselves in front of the past student council generations of the festival work to fail. No, we would. Sh okay, no, we should. We would sh shame ourselves. Yeah. Magic time. That's why there must be no flaws. No, er, I think that was encumbrance. No, nothing that might make this festival short of perfect. What the hell did she just say in the last one? Encumbrance. Encumbrance. Shizun's passionate speech and Misha's enacting are real oddly fitting of them. Uh, hello? Is it Hanako? Hi, Hanako. I look over my shoulder and see Hanako peering timidly into the classroom, most of her body hidden behind the door. Hey, playing delinquent again? Oh, I don't like you, Misha, now. That was mean. Hanako blushes hard at Misha's straightforward jab. Even if it was only a jet in the in jest. Da, da, da. Shizun stares at her <laughs> probingly cause Hanako causing Hanako to look down and start backing 
to the point where only her fingers can be seen wrapped nervously around the edges of the door. Maybe she is showing her dislike of Hanako by association with her dislike of Lily. It appears so, and Hanako probably knows it all as well. What is it, Hanako? Have you been here? Sorry, haven't seen since how. She came by in the morning, though. Hanako keeps looking uneasily at, at Shizun, who stares back at her with her unusual studying gaze. What is she trying to do? Of course, Shizun isn't going to look away, and she's intimidating enough as it is. So I can only imagine how terrified Hanako would be. It is a little uncomfort uncomfortable watching Hanako's reaction to Shizun's normal, Shizun's normal behavior. This is what happens when... Two people, two different extremes meet, it seems. Do you know where she is? Dot dot dot. If she has any sense in her head, she's in her classroom working on the festival project. But who knows where that woman is loitering at? You need to find her? She was looking for you this morning, but I guess you have missed each other. She waits a little without answering the simple question, looking awfully like she's not sure... If it's proper to answer such a question. Yeah. I can come with you. If it's okay. Aniko nods fractionally, still on guard, her shoulders stiff like wood. I get the feeling that she might be more comfortable by herself, after all. But it's too late to back off now. She has this really troubled expression. She seems to wear her almost constantly, one that makes me constantly be on guard myself. I wonder why. I wonder why she always seems to be so wary, or maybe more like why there could be a person like her. But I still have no idea how I should act around such a person. It's dinner time shoot soon. Were you planning to eat with Lily? She nods slightly. So she must have been trying to get in the cafeteria. Well, there's something of a dinner crowd just like the cafeteria is crowded during lunch. It's not as bad as dinner time is longer than lunch hour. It's not as bad because dinner time is longer than lunch hour, but I can understand why Hanako could be discouraged from going in. I pick up my bag and we take our leave. Hanako skips a little to meet my initial pace, so I slow down to match her speed. It doesn't take long for us to be walking at, at a comfortable pace down the hallway. It almost feels like we're going for a stroll together, something that I can, can't say I've really done before with a girl. Hanako doesn't seem to be thinking the same, though. Same thing, though. Even if, even if we are walking at the same pace, she never comes within arm's reach of me. I guess she's still a little uncomfortable around me, given how shy she is. There doesn't seem to be much helping it, at least for now. <clears throat> By the time we arrive at the cafe, there's there's not much of a crowd there, but Lily is nowhere to be seen. Hanako head sinks even lower than usual. Have you looked somewhere else already? Just at the library. I was reading. So she does spend the classes she skips at the library. Aha, uh -huh, so not exactly a thorough search then. Well, if I had to guess, she'd be in our own class, like Shazoon said, right? Right. The slightest of nods, Hanako agrees with my reasoning. Good, she's being... God, she's being so awkward. It's like I need to double... Huh. It's like I need double-layered silk gloves with padding to even begin interacting with her. Some small talk might help her because a bit more... <clears throat> Some small talk might help her become a bit more used to me. It isn't hard to tell that the silence between us is hovering on the edge of both our minds. So you and Lily usually hang out together after class, right? Yes. I'm not quite sure what... I expected from her answer, nor why I'd even asked the question. That much was rather obvious after all. She doesn't seem to like the type of 
alternative social circle either. So I suspect that Lily may be well, may well be her only friend. Must be pain, must be a pain being in a different class. <clears throat> must be a pain being in different classes, I'm guessing. She gives a sharp, almost reflective nod compared to Lily's careful thought about her actions and speech. Hanako hastens to make her answers as prompt and as short as possible. Lily comes by the classroom, though. Even when she's busy. She has a, sm a small smile she's, as she says it, eventually appreciating the fact Lily goes out of her way to help her. It's pretty cute, really. There isn't any need to say more. Both of us content that the discussions reached an end. As we ascend the stairs back to the lobby, we are met by a group of students heading downstairs like a school of fish moving from one feeding area to another. They seem to be keeping mostly to themselves, but before I can notice her doing so, Hanako has moved around behind me. Hey, are you alright? Just keep going. The students pass us without as much as a second glance, and Hanako takes up position to my side again as we enter the building. Her mo momentary reprieve from her anxiety all but snatched away. Even as we climb towards the third floor, she doesn't seem to relax. It isn't as if I've never known a shy person before, or even a shy girl, but Hanako seems to be pretty far beyond what I'd call normal for her fear of other people. <clears throat> Maybe she has agoraphobia. Ever think of that one, Hasao? If it weren't for Lily acting as a mediator, I doubt Hanako would be would have even been able to walk beside me like this. She seems to completely shut down in the presence of others. The rest of the walk up to Lily's classroom continues in strained silence while I rue her inability to socialize at all. After we make our way up the stairs, the noise coming from Lily's classroom is audible from halfway down the hallway. I wasn't expecting s such a din at all. Well, I guess we found her. This wasn't hard. Did Hanako come here first, then come to me for backup, I wonder? Well, if that's true, then at least she's starting to trust me a little. That can only be a good thing. Eventually, the two of us reach the door to class 3-2 with Hanako less than suddenly positioning herself behind me. I open the door. Inside is a hive of activity, seemingly every student in the class talking at once as they work hurriedly in their, in their separate tasks. Those desks are like exactly like the ones I have in my school. You can like use marker markers on them and stuff and you can read some. It's kinda cool. And they have like pencil holders on the top of them. Going by the paint cans, paint cans, decorations and banners being made, it must be for the upcoming school festival. I guess my first priority should be finding Lily. That's a tut. There. Finding her among the din is surprisingly easy. Not the least because of finding her among the din is surprisingly easy. Not the least because of her looks. With a couple of students gathering around her as she stands in front of the class, she seems to be in charge of the preparations, or at least busy organizing them. Carefully negotiating a path through the various students hunched over or for lack of desk space, I raise a hand entirely out of habit as we finally reach Lily. Hi, Lily. She perks her head up as she breaks off, talking to a noticeably smaller girl who must be in her, who must be her classmate, trying to listen as best she can. Okay, I think that's gonna do it for this. I've almost been going for like 15 minutes, and my voice is starting to hurt. It's all mucusy and stuff, so. Um, thanks for watching guys uh, probably do more of this and Wolf Among Us tomorrow so you can expect those soon hopefully but uh, yeah thanks for watching guys see you later